His Excellency President Luis Lula da Silva, President of the Federative Republic of Brazil, to take the floor. Meu caro My dear President of the Republic of South Africa, Africa. President Ramaphosa, my dear President Vladimir Putin, President, Vladimir Putin, President, of, the President of, the of the Russian Federation, here represented Lavrov. by Foreign Affairs Minister Lavrov, and my dear Prime Minister Modi of India, my dear Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China, and my dear sister Jilma Rousseff, the CEO of the New Development Bank, State Ministers of Brazil that are in my delegation, Mauro Vieira of Foreign Affairs, Fernando Haddad, Finance Minister of Brazil, Aniele Franco for Racial Equality, Ambassador Celso Modi, Special International Advisor of the President, and my dear wife, Janja. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Business Forum of the BRICS, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Women's uh, Entrepreneur Alliance, and uh, Madam Lula representative of the Business Alliance of Women of BRICS, and the youth member, Asanda Luaka. Dear friends, é uma alegria it's a great joy to come back to Johannesburg, the city that was a very important stage of struggle against apartheid and that continues to inspire us to fight all forms of discrimination and inequality. In the last time that I participated in this summit meeting, 2010, I had the honor to host in Brazil, our capital, the heads of state and government of Russia, India, and China, besides South Africa, that participated as a candidate to become a member of the BRICS. Only one year after that meeting, we confirmed that South Africa would join the BRICS in the first expansion of our grouping. Its inclusion made that we could ref better reflect the new configuration of the world power. We left that meeting strengthened. Today we represent 41% of the world population and we are responsible for 31% of the global GDP in terms of purchasing power parity. But we face a more complex scenario than when we met for the very first time. In few years, we went back from a benign multipolarity juncture to going back to an absolute mindset of Cold War and geopolitical competition. This is lack of the senses that generates great uncertainty and corrodes multilateralism. We know very where this path could take us. The world needs to understand the risks that are involved and which are unacceptable for humanity. The BRICS. Uh, we should say that all suffer the consequences of the war. The most vulnerable population in the developing countries are the ones that are hit more in an unproportional way. The Ukraine war shows the limitations of the UN Security Council. Many other conflicts and crises do not have the same attention. And the BRICS is a forum to discuss the main issues that affect peace and world security, we cannot bypass the treat. The main conflict of today that is happening in Ukraine that has global effects. Brazil has an historical position to the defense of the sovereignty and integrity of the territory and of all the principles that are followed by the UN. We believe that it is positive that a growing number of countries, amongst them the BRICS countries, also are engaged in direct contact with Moscow and with Kiev. We do not underestimate the difficulties to reach peace, and either we can be indifferent to the depths and the destruction that increase every day. 
Brazil does not contemplate unilateral forms for peace. We are ready to join efforts that we can effectively contribute for uh, immediate ceasefire and a fair and everlasting peace. Everybody suffers with the consequences of the war. The most vulnerable population in the developing countries are the ones that are reached in an unproportional way. The Ukraine war shows the limitations of the UN Security Council. Many other conflicts and crises do not receive the due attention even using uh, even causing vast suffering for their peoples. Haitians, Yemenites, Syrians, Syrians Libyans, Libyans, Sudanese, and Sudanese, and Palestinians all deserve to live in peace. It is unacceptable that mili global military expending in one year goes beyond $2 trillion, while the FAO says to us that 735 million people are in hunger every day in the world. The quest for peace is a collective obligation and an imperative for a fair development and sustainable development. The BRICS should act as a force for understanding and for cooperation. Our willingness is expressed in the contributions given by China, South Africa, and from my own country in all the endeavors to a conflict resolution in Ukraine. There are many places where men go to war. The women are the ones that fight for conciliation. The valuation and the strengthening of the role of women in the resolution of conflicts will be more and more central for peace in the world. And more than that, the women's empowerment is a precondition for a full socioeconomic development. And paraphrasing Thomas Sankara, a great pan-African leader, which says, we cannot hope for a society where half of the population is silenced by neo-chauvinism and by discrimination in political participation and in the world of labor. Dear friends, the weakening of the global governance is also clear in the development agendas, in financing, and in the confrontation with climate change. When I came back to the presidency in Brazil, I was very sad to see that the implementation of the 2030 agenda is under risk in all the world. A recent report from the UN indicates that we are in a strong backwardness. We see the greatest increase of inequality quality between the countries in more than the last three decades. In 30 percent of the goals, we stagnated or we're going backwards. It's very difficult to fight climate change while many developing countries still have to deal with hunger, poverty, and other kinds of violence. The principle of common and shared responsibility but differentiated keep is something that is true till today. The major response for the carbon emissions that caused for climate change were those countries that made their industrial revolution and feeded predatory colonial extractivism. They have an historical debt with the planet Earth and with humanity. We need to value the Paris Agreement and the Climate Convention instead of outsourcing climate responsibilities for the global south. Brazil is recovering its protagonism on the environmental agenda. The coordination with other, country, with other developing countries that carry tropical forests to act as the climate change COPES and biodiversity COPES will be vital to give way to our interests. In the summit meeting in the Amazon rainforest that was held some days ago was a landmark for the necessary construction of a sustainable development model with more fairness. Our resources should not be exploited for the benefit of few, but valued and placed to service all, and above all, for the well-being of the local populations. And more than that, so that the promises that were already done by the rich countries should be fulfilled, climate financing and biodiversity should be truly new and additional 
in relationship to the traditional finances of development. We need an international financial system that instead of feeding the inequalities should help the medium and low income countries to implement structural changes. This will only happen with an adequate representation of the Bretton Woods institutions and their climatic funds. Foreign indebtedness refrains sustainable development. It's unadmissible, it's inadmissible that the developing country should be penalized with interest rates that are eight times higher than the ones that are charged in the rich countries. It is necessary to increase liquidity to enhance concessional financing and, last but not the least, the conditionalities. The trade will have the bilateral system should be reactivated so it can come back and act as a tool for fair trade, predictable, equitable, and non-discriminatory. No one anymore remembers the development round of the WTO. The decarbonization of our economies should be followed by the job creation with dignity, industrialization and green infrastructure and public services for all. Through the new development bank, we can offer our own alternatives for adequate financing that will attend or meet the needs of the South, global South. I'm sure that under the leadership of my sister, Juma Rousseff, the bank will uh, manage to face these challenges. The creation of a common valid unit for our trade transactions and investments for the BRICS countries will increase our payment options and reduce our vulnerabilities. Uh, presidents, uh, today, uh, yes, today the BRICS are fully consolidated as a brand and uh, as a political asset of strategic value. The participation of dozens of heads of government and state tomorrow in the enhanced uh, session will represent a historical landmark. The interest of many countries to join the BRICS is the recognition of its growing relevance. And also, we will have a uh, troika at the G20 as members of the BRICS in the period 2023. And so it's another opportunity for us to uh, make advancement of the concerns of the global south with the inequalities and with sustainable development. That the momentum that motivated the creation of BRICS 15 years ago continue to inspire us in building a multipolar, fair, and inclusive international order. Thank you very much.